Thank you for this day. That was good worship. We just give the Father praise and honor for the opportunity to be here. Baruch Abba Bashem Yahuwah. And Bar- Barakah is, or Baruch is he who comes in the name, in the Shem of Yahuwah. Yah is Yahushua. I thank you for this uh, this set apart moment and opportunity to come before you and be with you this evening. We just thank you for this opportunity. Uh, this evening's teaching, which, uh, welcome to Eagles Haven Ministry dot com in the upper room of a beautiful Banning, California. I uh, um, you can see our website in all large caps of Eliyahu Channel dot com on YouTube. It's all large caps. If you go to the HTTP on the top and you put that in, it'll go right in to the channel. Uh, today's topic of the study tonight is going to be is our fathers have inherited lies, false information. The reason we say our fathers have inherited lies is because it's our forefathers passed down. As they go on from step to step and place to place, of, of their going transition or travel they've inherited certain lies and certain information and vocabulary and language without putting any any question where it came from or correction so tonight as we are rooted and grafted in Israelites exposing principalities and renouncing the pagan traditions and pagan deities and operating under the uh, uh, under the uh, the set apart anointing of a nabi, and, and and coming together in a gathering of nabiim, we're speaking forth the word a uh, nabat to the nations, to share with them and let them know, uh, this is the time and the season, the hour to come out from among them and be separated, and even our tongues and our languages to be separated. I like uh, I like you to come first of all. Let's go first of all to Yermi Yahu. Chapter 16, Yahu, chapter 16, that's Jeremiah 16, verse 19. And we're going to begin to read, and we just barakah, baruch, the word that's going to go forth as we worshiped and prayed earlier. We just operate under that saturation of His presence in this upper room house. As we look at verse uh, 19, it is written, O Yahuwah, my strength and my stronghold and my refuge, in the day of of distress, the nations, the Goy, shall come to you from the ends of the earth and say, Our fathers have inherited only falsehood, futility, and there is no value in them. It says the nations, the Goy, the Goyim, the strangers will come to the house of Israel and say, and say to the Father also, Yahuwah, O Yahuwah, our strength and my stronghold and my refuge in the day of distress, the nations. And there, this is, this is the time we need strength and the stronghold of my refuge is today. In that day of distress, and this is the time of distress throughout the world. This is the time of distress everywhere. The beginning bangs, verb bangs are taking place. Our fathers have inherited falsehood, inherited inherited falsehood, fertility, and there is no value in them. And this is where we're saying we have it's the fathers that have inherited this falsehood of information with the S fathers. And verse twenty, would a man make mighty ones for himself which are not mighty ones? And this is taking place. Even in the Christian community, as well as in some of the Messianic and other th- congregations, uh, they have part truth and part uh, misconception, or they're not researching deeper and getting to a be- to better understanding of what we're dealing with in the principalities, the powers, rulers, darkness of this age and time. How we're going to battle these things, and we must be skillful with our spiritual swords. In verse twenty-one, therefore, see, I am causing them to know. This time, I cause them to know. My name, my hand, and my might, and they shall know that my Shem is Yahuwah. They shall know that my Shem is Yahuwah. Let's read it again. And he says, verse 21, Therefore, see, I am causing them to know, this time I cause them to know, 
my hand and my might and they shall know they shall know that my Shem my name is Yahuwah he says they shall know it because if they come honestly and say we have inherited lies and falsehood our information is scrambled and we're going to learn in the passages of the scriptures where kings have even they've been operating under a religious system in Israel that they didn't even have the Torah no more they had to find it in a corner while they were cleaning the temple we're going to learn about that let's go to Yermiyahu, Jeremiah chapter 28 chapter 28 verse 15 hallelujah we praise him we worship him we give him honor and praise the rock of Yahuwah of the rock Kadosh has been manifesting mightily in the upper room and wherever we go to minister the team of ministers in this ministry under this congregation or in with this congregation in unison it, it, as we look at chapter 28 verse 15 it says and the prophet or Navi Yermiyahu said to Hananiah the prophet listen or Navi please Hananiah Yahuwah has sent has not sent you but you have made these people trust in falsehood this is taking place today many have went but were not sent and they were sent by organizations or by cliques of people mimicking each other teaching and lay hands on them one another without a without a, a set apart anointing call to be an operation as a Nabi and they've been going out and operating dissimilar to this man Hanan Yah Yahuwah has not sent you but you have made these people to trust in falsehood and let it be heard today in the regions of by the four corners of the sound of my voice of the anointed to go forth and say it again to many people that are listening or people are abroad he says therefore thus says Yahuwah see I am sending you away from the face of the earth this year you shall die for you have spoken apostasy apostasy against Yahuwah and Hananiah the, the Nabi died the same year in the seventh new moon the word was spoken to him of what's going to take place of his falsehood and he went to he wasn't even giving time to repent to get right he says you've been, you've been speaking to these people false the father hasn't sent you and they've been speaking in the fall uh, speaking in the lords and the gods and saying thus says lord thus says god but that's not his name that's not even a title it's a name of a, a baal it's a name of of the, the germanic or anglo-saxon deities they're confessing and saying it to the people falsehood and lies and the father is pulling the sheep clothing from the wolves and exposing these lies chapter 29 verse 7 and seek and seek the shalom of the city where I have ex exiled you and pray to Yahuwah for it for in its shalom you have shalom for thus says Yahuwah of hosts Elohim of Israel let not your Nabi and your diviners who are in your midst, or I should say prophet, because that's proper in Greek, a fortune teller, uh, and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you. Neither listen to the dreams which you ha are dreaming, for they are they are prophesied falsehood to you in my Shem, in his character or name. I have not sent them, declares Yahuwah. He says, He has not sent them. They're prophesying lies and deception. Look at verse 11 of chapter 29. Continue. For I know the plans I am planning for you, declares you, plans of shalom, not of evil, to give you a future and not an, 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 an in expectancy. Then you should call on me and shall come and pray to me and I shall listen to you and you shall seek me and shall find me when you search for me with all your love or heart and mind, will, emotion and it says here verse 14 and I shall be found by you 
declares Yahuwah, and I shall turn back your captivity and shall gather you from all the Goyim, all the nations and foreign lands, and from all the places where I have driven you, declares Yahuwah, and I shall bring you back to the place from which I have exiled you, because you have said, Yahuwah has raised up <laughs> prophets or fortune tellers, but it's supposed to be Nabi for us in Babel. And many people think that they have these special words raised up in the United States to continue to protect the United States in prayer and hang on to the horns of, of the stock market, false deities, bulls and stakes, and hanging on to these pagan things and, and trying to pray out all the, all the things that are coming to the land. But But just like it happened here, the Father would forgive us, but the sin will find us out. This nation, this nation for what it has done to the innocent lives of children and the pagan worship from the, from the, many, from the highest place of Capitino Hill, which is the, the mountain of Jupiter, Capitol Hill is, go look it up in the dictionary, it is the place of worship of Jupiter in the exact scale. Or also White House, which means the Palladian style of construction to scale for Athema the, the deity of Athema Sophia see, see. so we are under a system of Babel similar to Babel you could, you, could, you could name it claim it all you want but I'm telling you right now it is over the veils come off the times of the fulfillment of the Gentiles is over it is time for the house of Israel to rise up and possess their promises for them let's go to Ezekiel Chapter 8, verse 12. And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what, what the elders of the house of Israel are doing? Yisrael are doing in the dark, each one in the room of his idols. For they say, Yahuwah does not see, Yahuwah has forsaken the land. And he said to me, You are to see, you are to see still greater abominations which they are doing. So even though we see a superficial things of sin, and then we go deeper, we're going to see more. We go deeper, we're going to see more. We go to the high up, to the capital. We go all the way up to every region of government and the society. It is gone total, total viral. The signs on the billboards and the freeways, the music, the TV, everything that's going on 50 years ago did not exist the way it is 30 years ago, 40. It rapidly going into sin, uh, deep abominations, and no one is stopping it. The, the Christians are not stopping it, no matter how much they pray in the Christian community. It's not happening. Okay? Verse 14, and he brought me to the door of the north gate of the house of Yahuwah and I saw a woman sitting there weeping for Tammuz now in the same like manner people go around saying G-O-D-B-L-E-S-S -S. they're telling people that God bless or blessings which is two German words and blessing Bladosian is for Tammuz it's the blood ritual it's a blood ritual of sacrificing babies Taking the blood out, mixing the ashes after they're 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 burnt to ashes, and putting a tea on the forehead, and this is a ritual that goes on in, in denominations today still, but it's an ancient t t uh, ritual of Tammuz, of a good luck ash of a sacrificial child. Verse 15. Then he said to me, "Have you seen this, O son of man? You are to." See still greater abomination than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the house of Yahuwah. And there, and there at the door of the heckle of the, the, we don't call it temple, but the heckle of Yahuwah between the porch and the slaughter place were about 25 men with their backs towards the heckle of Yahuwah and their faces toward the east. And they were bowing themselves eastward to the sun. We see this, and they, when they have, instead of using Pesha or Passover, they bow at sunrise, sun, God, day service, and to the sun rising in their face when He was already resurrected, three days and three nights, and that evening of Shabbat, and they come to the tomb, and they make it up, and they worshiping the pagan deities of the sun worship, or, or Cyrus, uh, uh, Easter, Astaris, 
in verse 17 and he said to me have you seen O son of man it is a small matter to the house of Yehuda talking about Yehuda now to do the abomination what they have done here for they have filled the land with violence and turned back to provoke, to provoke me and see they are putting the branch to my nose therefore verse 18 I shall indeed deal in righteous indignation wrath my eye shall not pardon nor would I spare and they shall cry in my ears with a loud voice but I shall not hear them let the word of Yahuwah thus says Yahuwah we can say thus says Yahuwah here because it shall come to pass for the sins of indignation of, the, of righteous indignation that is righteous anger the father has for the sins that are going out to the lands not just in this country and nation and states but in many others as well let's go back to, let's go to um, Isaiah chapter 2 Yeshia, Yeshayahu chapter 2 verse 5 and it is written, O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of Yahuwah. For you have forsaken your people at the house of Jacob. Because they have been filled from the east and practiced magic like the Philistines. And they are pleased with the children of foreigners. This is the fruit of what's going on today, right now. You can read a little higher up, starting in verse uh, 3. And you're going to just go up a little higher up to read your homework on that and then continue 5 and 6 and catch up where the people are pleased of the foreigners and they're pleased to practice the arts of the East and magic and witchcraft of the Philistines which today like Samaria. Look at with me to go back to Yermiyahu chapter 10 with verse 1 and I think it's through 5. Here the word which Yahuwah speaks to you, O house of Israel. Who's house of Israel? That's us. We've been grafted in into the roots according to the scriptures of Romans 10, 12 through 13. Roman, uh, Hebrews 8, 8 through 10. Hebrews 8, 6 through 13. Chapter 10, 14 through 18 of, of Hebrews and on and on. Ephesians chapter 2, 3 and 4. We have been grafted into the house of Israel. We're not in a denomination. We're grafted into the house of Israel. Verse 1. Verse 2 now. Thus says Yahuwah, Do not learn the way of the nations, the goy, and do not be awed by the signs of the heavens. For the nations are awed by them, or the by the signs of the shamanim. For the, for the laws, or the right ruling of these people. Let's use the word law, the Latin words. Okay? The Latin word law. For the laws of these people are worthless. For one cuts down a tree from the forest word from the hands of the craftsmen with the cutting tool the beautify it with silver and gold they strengthen it with nails and hammers so that it does not topple or topple down they are like a rounded post and they do not speak they have to they have to be carried because they do not walk do not be afraid of them for they do not do no evil nor is it in them to do any good there is none like you, O Yahuwah. You are great, and, and great is your Shem, your name in my... Who would not hear you, O Sovereign of the nations? For this is your due. For among all the wise men of the nations, in all their reigns, in all their sovereigns, in all their reigns, there is none like you. They are both brutish and foolish, and instruction of worthlessness is that tree, is the tree. Worthlessness. And this is where the people practice this art of Christmas. They call it Christo Misa or Christmas. And, it, and, and that, that didn't even come to the United States and West Coast until 1910, 1920. It didn't even come to the East Coast to around uh, 1860s and 1880s. This is the fast, quick sin crept in. Among that came in through the Irish Catholics, through the, colony, the old colony states. Okay, let's look at now Hosea, Hoshua, Hoshua or Hosea in uh, other translations, in American translation, chapter 2, verse 16. Chapter 2, 
So we're not to follow their pagan winks. We're not to learn their customs of the goy of the strangers. And we're Israelites. We've been blended in. We came here. Our forefathers have came from step from step from Europe and other locations and ended up in the United States or wherever who's listening by your stream. We have been goyim, strangers passing through different locations. Now we're coming home, back home to the house of Israel, starting right here in our hearts and our minds renewed and our tongues. And it says in Hosea, or Yeshua, chapter 2, verse 16, and it shall be in that day declares Yahuwah that you call me my husband and no longer call me L-O-R-D my ball B-A-A-L Baal that's L-O-R-D you can look it up and get in depth in it it is L-O-R-D it's not Greek it's not Hebrew it's not Latin it's, it's adopted language even in the European England England's Anglo-Saxon Germans they have a different form of it okay but it's B-A-A-L. And I shall remove the names of the Baals or L-O-R-Ds from her mouth. And they shall no more be remembered by their name. No more shall they be remembered. We will erase them from our tongues. We will not claim them and point to our Father and say pagan words. And aim towards Him anymore. We shall not do admixture anymore. Somebody praise Yahuwah out there. Is to be praised. Hallelujah. Let's go to Melakim Bet. 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 7. No more. What our fathers inherited and our forefathers inherited and their goyim and their strangers, sojourners, passing on and developing themselves like a strange goy nation. When you are grafted into the house of Israel through the Hebrew blood of the Hebrew Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, and you're grafted into the house and you abide in the Torah and the Tanakh, and you're obedient to the uh, obedient to to the right ruling and the uh, what we call the ten word marriage covenant, the prescribed instructions, and you operate under that uh, amunah, and as you're operating in obedience, and you're grafted in, you are no more goy. You are Israel. You are no more goy. You're Israel. Okay, For our forefathers have inherited lies. They've been lied to. I met Yahudi that are Muslim they don't want to go back to the house of Israel I met Yahudi that married Asian women and they're all into the pagan stuff they don't want to go back to the house of Israel I met Yahudi that are Catholic because of marriage I met Yahudi that are Christian and many denominations they don't want to go back to their roots they don't want to take the veils off and have an understanding they are into this mixture and this come to be because the children of Israel had sinned against Yahuwah their Elohim, Elohim who had brought them up out of the land of Misarim from under the land of the Pharaoh sovereign of Misarim and, and feared other mighty ones they revered other mighty ones and walk in the laws of the nations whom Yahuwah had dispossessed from before the children of Israel and of the sovereign of Israel that they had made. Listen to me. Listen carefully. We're going to keep reading. They said they have all walked in the laws of where they're at, where they're traveling through, in the ways of other sovereigns and in, in, in the reign of other kings. And they're walking in their laws. When you enter the United States, you enter the United States with they call the biggest idol pagan deity with the ten pointed star under its foundation with its highest, highest type of star of, of pagan worship called the Statue of Liberty. When you look at it with a Google, you look down on that Statue of Liberty, you'll see the crescent moon and the five pointed stars of the pentagrams. You'll see hexagrams. You'll see all kinds of mystical stuff in the. I don't know what it's artwork. I've never been there. I just look, googled it and see on top and all around. But it's a ten pointed star. Now, the Statue of Liberty is a pagan divity, divi, deity of Libertarius. It's a female deity. Okay, she has her own law. She says it's no more. It's no more. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah it is same sex relationships it is no more murder it's called abortion it is no more 
uh, uh, entrapment. Oh, we can just hear a rumor when the scripture said, "By the mouth of two or three witnesses, everywhere be established." It is no more. It is no more. They they changed the 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 Torah that was given to the people that came to this nation. They literally have stomped on it, stepped on it, added new laws, and it's the laws of this nation. Now we are not a part of that system. We are not a part of the pagan deity of Libertarius. We are obedient to the laws of the system, long as it doesn't come in contrary to the Torah and the Ten Commandments or what we call the Ten Word Prescribed Instruction Marriage Kaduba. so now understand this we respect everywhere we go as Israelites in every country and obey obedience to their system of laws because by precept laws and bylaws where you park a car stopping in a light those are all good functioning laws to work with and be obedient Okay, in the land. But we are not to be a part of the pagan worship of it. And libertarius is the laws of the land that people have given up. We will never forget the true commandments or the ten work covenant. Let's keep reading. And the children of Israel, verse 9, secretly did against Yahuwah their Elohim matters that were not right. And they built for themselves high places in all their cities from watchtower unto the walled city. And set up for themselves pillars in, of Asherim on every high. And Asherim is groves. We see groves all over the United States, all over the cities. There's groves. Look up the word grove. It is Asherim. It is a place of pagan worship. Every high hill and under every green tree and burnt incense there on all the high places like the, the nations or the Gentiles whom, I, whom Yahuwah had removed from the, their presence and they did evil matters to provoke Yahuwah and serve the idols of which Yahuwah said to them, Do not do this! And Yahuwah warned Israel and Yehuda through all of his people, his, his uh, not be, or his basic uh his nabiim multitude of prophets and every seer saying turn back from your evil ways and guard my commands and my my right ruling or prescribed instructions according to all the torah which i command your fathers which i sent to you by my servant servants the nabiim verse 14 and they did not listen and hearken to hearken their necks like the necks of their fathers who did not turn their trust in Yahuwah, their Elohim, and rejected His His Torah, or right ruling, His prescribed instructions, and His covenant, marriage covenant, ketubah that He made for us, and He had made with their fathers, and His witness which He had witnessed against them, and went after worthlessness, and became worthless after their na after the nations were, were all around them, and of Yahuwah had commanded them not to do like them. See, he said they're going to be scattered, but don't be like them. He said you're going to go to those nations, you're going to pray for shalom, and you're going to get shalom because of your prayers to Yahuwah, and you know the true name of the Creator. And you're going to pray for shalom. You're going to get shalom. You're going to prosper. But the problem is they went and blended in and took on their laws and pagan traditions. 16. And they left all the commands of you, their Elohim, and made for themselves molten images to calves and made an ashram and <laughs> groves and bowed themselves to all the hosts of heaven and astrology and served by all and cause their sons and their daughters, which is L-O-R-D, to pass through the fire. And it happens after he exposes the aborted corpses too. And they're still practicing it with the, 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 the different groves that they have in California and other places where there's ritual practices and nobody knows what's really going on. And practice divination, sorcery, and sold themselves to evil in the eyes of Yahuwah to provoke him. And Yahuwah was very enraged with Israel and removed them from his presence. None was left but the tribe of Yahuwah alone. Yehuda alone. Verse 19. Yehuda also did not guard the commands of Yahuwah their only Elohim. Yehuda, the tribe of Judah, did not guard the commands of Yahuwah their Elohim, but walked in the laws, like the Talmudic understanding, the verbal oral, not the written, of Israel which they made. 
And Yahuwah rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and gave them into the hand of plunderers until he had cast them out from his presence. Look at verse 23. We're still in chapter 17. Until Yahuwah removed Israel from, all, from his presence as he spoke to all his servants, the, the Nabim. So Israel was exiled from their land to Asherah as it is written that is, excuse me, as it is to this day. Look at verse 24. And the sovereign of Ashur brought people from Babal, and from Kethon, and from Awa, Awa, and from Hamath, and from Sepharawain, and placed them in the cities of Shamarun, which is Samaria, instead of the children of Israel. And they took possession of Shamarun, Samaria, and dwelt in this city. So while they were held captive to take it out of the land needed to be worked, the land needed to be collecting some form of taxes for the emperor, the king. So he sent others to that land. And it came to be at the beginning of their dwelling there, right in the beginning, that they did not, they did not revere Yahuwah. And Yahuwah sent lions among them, verse 25, which were killing them among them. Verse 26, And they spoke to the king, the sovereign of Ashur, saying, The nations whom you have removed and placed in the cities of Shamarun or Samaria do not know the right ruling of Elohim of the land. They don't know the right ruling of the Elohim of the land. They don't know how to keep the feast. They don't know how to keep the order in order to be prosperous and have shalom. And because of that, the animals and the elements are working against them. Because the, the land had a stone with the Creator's name. They had the stone of the covenant. Every tribe had a stone. And they placed it in the land and they made covenant rule. They prayed. They spoke the name. So it's in the atmosphere. It's in the soil. It's in the atmosphere of the trees and the olive branches and the vines. But yet they don't know the right ruling to bring favor, prosperity, of uh, 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 shalom. And because of it, things were starting to devour them. Continue verse 26. And he, and he has sent lions among them. And see, they are slain among them because they do not know the right ruling of the Elohim of the land. They don't know the right ruling of the Elohim of the land. There's a new race, a nation has rose up in this nation. There's a mixture of different nationalities that have come here and never made covenant to the truth. Elohim of the forefathers. The, now I'm not talking about the presidents or masons. I'm talking about the founding father ones that came here, came here and kept the Shabbat and kept the commandments. And eventually Christianity overpowered them and overrun them. I'm talking about the ones that that would celebrate Thanksgiving and it broke bread with the First Nation people. With the first broke bed with the Na Native Americans before there was even a holiday called Thanksgiving because they, they rearranged it and placed that holiday Thanksgiving on a pagan day okay, for pagan ritualistic all right? but the original season or the real story of what had happened those people had right ruling covenant with the First Nation people verse 27 and the sovereign of Asher commanded saying send one of the priests one of the Hebraic priests whom you exiled from there to go there. Let him go and dwell there. And let him teach them the right ruling of Elohim of the land. And one of the priests whom they had exiled from, from Samaria, Shamaron, Shamaron, came and dwelt in Bethel El. And taught them how to, he, to revere Yahuwah. Not fear. Fear is a, is a Greek word for demon or phobia. It's supposed to revere Yahuwah. We cast out fear, but we do not uh, fear the, the Creator. We revere and reverence Him. Verse 29. Every nation was making mighty ones or deities or geodes of its own and put them in the houses of the high places which the, the Shamoyon, the Samaritans, had made. Every nation or in the cities where they dwell. In other words, they made different mighty ones, different GODs, just like the United States today. There's different temples, different DODs, GODs, they're different mighty ones, strongholds, principalities. Verse 30, And the men of Babel made Sukkot, Benoth, 
and the men of Kuth made and it names every detail the gal and the men of Amoth made Ashim Sukkot means they made dwelling places like tabernacles okay tents and Sephirites uh, Sephirites burned their children in fire to Adramalek and Amalek the mighty ones of Sepharim verse 32 they also re revered Yahuwah from every class they made for themselves priests of the high places who offered for them in the high in the house of the high places verse 33 they were revering Yahuwah and they were serving their own mighty ones according to the ruling of the nations from among whom they have been exiled it's like today the, the Christian community and other forms of the denominations of Christianity they say they're worshipping the Elohim of Israel but they're using the pagan deity names they say they revere Israel and the Elohim of Israel and some do and give homage to Israel and go there on tourism and respect and give and give Berakah there uh, and yet at the same token they are continuing to come back here or their ancient countries go back to their from where they came tourism to Israel and they continue to worship their mighty ones in every high place and this day 34 they are doing according to the former rulings they are not revering with reverence nor do they Yahuwah nor do they follow the neither nor do they follow the ten right rule covenant called they say laws that's Latin but it's the prescribed instructions of the right rulings of the Torah and the commands which Yahuwah had commanded the children of Yaakov whose name he made Israel 35 with whom you who have made a covenant and commanded them saying do not do not fear other mighty ones nor bow down to them nor serve them nor slaughter to them and that's what's going on today people have big sacrifices for their mighty ones they even put the Christmas trees on the altars of their Christian community service and they worship and they're pointing to all praying in that direction laying hands during songs and they don't realize even though they say I don't worship the tree but it's you're right in front of it and most of your your Christian community congregations are built in mason design. The secret society is the mason the construction and design of architect. Okay, now, verse 36. But Yahuwah who brought you up from the land of Mishraim with great power and with an outstretched arm, Him you shall revere, and to Him you shall bow yourself, and to Him you shall, you shall slaughter or give a sacrificial willful offering and guard to do forever the laws or the commands or the right ruling of the Ten Covenant the right rulings of the Torah and the commands which you wrote for you and do not, and do not fear other mighty ones but yet they said they don't ah we're not in the commands we're saved by the G girl G-R-A-C-E which is a pagan goddess it is a principality and stronghold G-R-A-C-E is a pagan Goddess, the, the pagans worship her, the Greeks worship her, they still worship her, they still got temples, and they still got temples of prostitution to grace, charity, and charismatica. Charismatic. They still doing it today. Nothing's changed. And the Christians have adopted the spirits of these pagan names, and their worship is say they're saved on that, not through the toning blood. Verse verse uh, thirty eight. Do not forget the covenant that I have made with you and do not do not revere, fear other mighty ones but revere Yahuwah your Elohim said he delivers you from the land hand of all your enemies and they did not obey but did according to the former rulings they continue to continue on in their rules and laws of the nations so these nations were 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 revering Yahuwah and serve their carved images this way lions won't come after them both their children their children and children as their fathers did they are doing to this day even so okay based on the timeline of those scriptures now go with me to chapter 22 in the same book Melachim Bet 2nd Kings 22 this is a good story write it down mark it that story we just read 
where they continue to say and point to the Elohim of Israel, but they use the pagan names and rituals and their priests and raise up high places in every corner and every place, just like we drive around in Los Angeles. And this is a Babylon, this is straight of Babel, Babylon. Every every street you go is a different title with a different name of a different denomination, different religion. Now we got all kinds of pagan deities and pagan belief systems here and idols of Buddha, idols of, of, of Islamic temples with their stars, their eight-pointed stars and uh, uh, t- uh, uh, where their dome sits on in most of them or they have the crescent moon and star. Okay, so the stars are five-pointed with a hexagram. Okay, so these are, the word star is Astara, which is a pagan deity. There is no star when you look up to the, up to the Shamarin that has five points. This is the, the goddess condition, drawing five points, putting stars when we were growing up, and that's Astara. It's a pagan deity. And we're confessing it. It's all around us. And we need to put it off and cast it off like an unclean garment. In Yeshua's name. Cast off all the unclean. Renew your mind with the word. Chapter 22, 1 through 3. We boast to renew the spirit of our minds with the word of Elohim. And let it wash and renew our mind. But people say, oh, I don't want to speak. You know, I speak English. No, you don't. You don't even speak English. And if you do read the Christian scriptures, 37% is Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, and Latin, and some other languages mixed in between. German, Germanic words. So you're not even speaking English. And it took you, it took you a short season to learn that. You can learn it more now if you're really dedicated and want to know. Okay? You're really hungry for the truth. You're really striving. You're feasting on the word of Elohim. 22, 1 through 3. Yoshia, Yoshiahu was eight years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Yidida, and the daughter of Adaliah, Pachkoth. Verse 12, 2. And he did what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah and walked all in the ways of his father, his Ben Dawid, and did not turn aside right or left. Now listen carefully. His father wasn't directly David, not even his grandfather. He is ancestrally down. Great, 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 great grandfather was David. But when you're doing right as a sovereign, you're adopted under Dawid now. You're skipping the fathers and grandfathers that did sin and messed up and been buried not in different tomb sites. If you're going to be buried in the tomb of your father, of, of Dawid, of the sovereigns of Israel, you're going to be buried in a good place. Okay, not in the, the place of, of, of the, the ones that have crossed over to paganism and brought all kinds of Baal worship and other pagan diagon and other pagan things into Israel. Okay, so now... So it says, he, because he did right in the father's eyes, he, the father spoke to him through this scripture of this particular Nabi. He says, he, as he did right as his father Dawid. He gave him direct lineage to Dawid. Verse 3. And he says, and it came to be in the 18th year of the sovereign Yoshiyahu, that the sovereign sent Safan, the scribe son of At. Salyahu, son of Mishalum, to the house of Yahuwah, saying, He wanted him to go there and make a collection to clean the temple. And he did set up a doorkeeper and he started a collection to clean up the temple because it was running down and falling apart. And I can't imagine what we're about to read right now. The hundreds of years or 80 years, 100 something years, just like us today, 50, 60, 80, 100 years, how much Christianity is backslid, and they don't even know they're backslid. Okay? Even in the Christian community, they're backslid in their own doctrinal beliefs. They're far away from the house of Israel being grafted in. They're grafted into another baptism of another name, and another blood, and another everything. They're say they say by the G-R-A-C-E girl. Okay? Now, verse 8, listen carefully. And Eliakim the high priest said to Safin the scribe, I have found the book of the Torah, the Sefer, the scroll of the Torah in the house of Yahuwah. And Eliakim gave the book to Safan, and he read it. And Safan the scribe came to the sovereign and brought word to the sovereign again, saying, Your servants, they were excited, have gathered the silver and that was found in the house and have given it into the hand of those who do the work, who observe 
or oversee the house of Yahuwah. And Saban the scribe informed the sovereign, saying, Hid Kiyah the priest has given me a book. And Saban read it before the sovereign. So what book were they reading? What trans king, king Imus, Genevus, uh, Aranimus, uh, what uh, uh, Codus, <laughs> Septuagint, what translation <laughs> would they read <laughs> all these years and then they find the original one like the Dead Sea Scrolls or other scrolls that are being found in Israel today. Uh, they're finding them and they say, oh my goodness, take it to the king, let him read the real pure word. We have been reading the wrong things and you're going to read and see what they've been reading wrong. And it came to pass when the sovereign heard the words of the book of the Torah that he tore his garments. Oh, we at Eagles Haven and many others in many ministries, we tore our garments of our mind, our spirit, our heart, our love, our garments. I literally ripped my clothes and fell on my face and says, Woe is me of unclean lips and practicing shameful words of paganism and not even knowing it. Woe is me, I have a blushing conscience restored to me. And the problem with people that know the right ruling and know the right word and know the right, 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 and do not, they don't have more blushing conscience. There's no more blushing in their lives. And the Father can read that in your love, your heart, all the way. So we have torn our garments. We have torn our garments completely because we want more of Him. Verse 13, Go inquire of Yahuwah for me, for the people, for all Yehuda, concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath, righteous indignation of Yahuwah, that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning it. It's in the Word to keep the Torah, to keep the Torah, to keep the Ten Word Covenant. It's the Word to keep the Shabbat. It's in the Word to keep the feast. It's in the Word to keep a lot of things, but they don't follow it. They say, we don't do that no more. We don't pray. That is Old Testament. They don't realize out of their mouth, the Testament is a Latin word for somebody dead and gone, they inherited a little bit, and you're continuing. No, it is a, a covenant, a living covenant. It is not a testament like a will and testament, and he's gone. You're, when you say that use the word testament you're actually agreeing that he died and never rose from the dead our messiah rose from the dead and we have continued covenant with him praise the father and it's a renewed covenant and verse 14 in elikayahu el helkiyahu the priest of hakam and akbor and excuse me for trying to pronounce these word names. Shaphan and Asayah went to Hilda, the prophetess, or we won't use the word prophetess because that's Greek for fortune teller. We're going to use the word Nebiah. Nebiah. N E B I Haifa Y A H. Nebiah. Prophetess. The wife of Shalom, the son of Tigwa the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she was dwelling in Jerusalem in the second quarter and they spoke with her. And I've been in that quarter. Okay? Now, she was still operating under the manifestations of her Nabi, of the gifts, and she was preparing the sacred garments of the wardrobe. And they knew that she was there because the, the king sent them to her. They knew she had a righteous word, a pure tongue. It wasn't the false prophets that were living in the temples and operating in the church. Oh, excuse me, synagogue. Oh, I mean, excuse me, in the in the churches or congregations of that system, in the mainstream system, they had to go out and get her in because she wasn't dwelling among them. And she said to them, "Thus says Yahuwah Elohim of Israel: Say to the man who sent you to me." Thus says Yahuwah, see, I am bringing evil on this place and on its inhabitants. All the words of the book which you are sovereign, which the sovereign of Yehuda has read. It's going to happen according to the word. It's going to happen in the United States according to the word. It's going to happen in every country that don't obey his word. It shall come to pass. Because they have forsaken me 
and burnt incense to other mighty ones and provoked me with all the works of their hands and so my wrath righteous indignation shall be kindled against this place and not be quenched it will not be stopped now people will have their lives as a ransom even in the United States because they follow the right ruling they dedicated their land they dedicated their place their home as a dedicated place heckle a place of worship a sukkut a place of habitation for him and they proclaimed his name wherever his name is he'd be protected but if people are not proclaiming they're proclaiming other names and other deities you ain't going to have no protection okay and to the sovereign of Yehuda who sent you to inquire of Yahuwah Thus, this say this to him. Thus says Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. This said Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. As for the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender and humble yourself before Yahuwah, when you heard what I spoke against this place and against all its inhabitants, that they would become a ruin and a curse and did tear your garments and wept before me, I also have heard and declares Yahuwah. And he says, He will bring the evil, but He will protect the king in his lifetime. You go ahead and study it, read it more, and meditate on it. It's a great passage. Go to look at chapter 23. We're going to start in verse 1. Okay? Same, Melachim Bet, or Second Kings, chapter 23. And the sovereign said, and they gather all the elders of Yehuda and Jerusalem to him. And the sovereign went up to the house of Yehuda with all the men of Yehuda and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priest and the Nabi and all the people, both the small and great. And we read in the hearing of the words of the book of the covenant. It is a living covenant. It's not called Old Testament. It's all. It is the first covenant. We have a renewed covenant from a renewed marriage vow. Okay. But it is a covenant. The book of the covenant which ye have been found in the house of Yahuwah. Verse 3. And the sovereign stood by the column and made a covenant before Yahuwah to the follow Yahuwah. And to guard his commands and his witnesses and his... And his witnesses? The confirmation witnesses? And his ten word, ten word prescribed instruction they call laws with all his heart and with all his being to establish the words of his covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood to, to the covenant they stood up then the sovereign commanded Helkiyahu the high priest and the priest of the second order the doorkeepers to bring out of the heckle of Yahuwah out of the heckle of Yahuwah all the objects which were made by Ba they had a different book they had the objects of the L-O-R-D and for Asher the groves and for all the host of heaven and he burned them outside Jerusalem in the field of Gibron and took the ashes to Bethel now look it and he put down the black robe priest whom the sovereigns of Yehuda had appointed to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Yehuda and in the places of all around Jerusalem and those who burn incense to L-O-R-D B-A-A-L to the sun. This is not something you could turn and look at Israel and point their finger. Ah, 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 look what they did. Because the Christian community is just as guilty today for the same crimes, for the same sinful nation. They have brazen crosses with IHS, which is the Trinity of ISIS, horses, and sub. They have all these images, and they have the womb reeves, the, the Christmas reeves, and they have all these pagan stuff in their altar that needs to go out and be burned. They got the L-O-R-D. They got this Latin Italian guy that looks like the, the son of, of Pope Alexander, the Bogia family, knocking on the door and calling him the J-Man. They got all these pagan deities, which is like of Zeus and Jupiter. They got all these pagan deities. Please understand me. You're worshiping pagan deities and don't even realize it. You're speaking their names and never even question it. You've been giving inherited falsehood, not just you innocently accepted from your fathers, but your fathers and forefathers and fathers have inherited on their soul journey on the way. 
Some of you are righteous pagans. You came from paganism. You came from the ritual stuff. You came from Anglo Saxons and Englishmen, like my forefathers, roaming through. The Childa family were Yehudi Jews that were roaming through and fought with Anglo Saxons, the Catholicism of Spain, and blended in. Many of them ended up going back to the house of Israel and joining and being a part of the, of, of, of the word of the covenant. But some of them could join Christianity and England. But we're going back. We can text. We can internet, go to the internet. We can email. We can check every word spoken out of our mouth. And we can guard it. And stop worshiping the sun. And stop listening to the black world priest. As a dream of the night. Everyone that comes against the house of Israel. Shall be like a dream of a nightmare. It will be over. We will not speak the LORDs. We will not speak the dramatic GODs and Anglo-Saxon. We will not use those pagan spells of the Geshpil, a German word or Anglo-Saxon word. It's not Hebrew, Greek, or Latin. Why are you using these things and not researching the Scriptures? You, oh, you, woe is you, you shepherds and leaders. Call yourself theologians, which is the Greek word, a Greek term for the teaching or a, a, a degree of knowledge of understanding the gods. Come on, give me a break. Repent. We need to repent. In verse 23, And when he sees the children of work at my hand in the midst, and they shall set apart my name, and set apart the part one of Yaakov, and, fear, and, and revere Elohim of Israel. And those who went astray, spirit shall come to understand, and grumbles at uh, Accept instru- and the grumblers accept instruction. Even the grumbling and moaning and groaners, they're going to accept instructions of his true name. Go to uh, Micaiah or Micah 4, chapter 4, verse 5. It is written, And all these people walk each one in the name of his GODs, mighty ones. But we walk in the Shem, the name of Yahuwah, our Elohim, forever and ever. Forever and ever. I was doing some research. There's a, there, there, there's a movie called The Wrath of the Titans. Titans and, and I did some edited research without getting squ- gobbled in and watching the whole movie. But some guy did some editing, great editing, great look upon the words and the terminology using the pagan deities, showing like a Lucifer and showing like a J-man and showing them helping each other to fight this other creature destroying all the heavens or it's just Elysian fields where the Greek deities dwell. And then the humans wanted superhuman mighty one G.O.D. weapons. And they tell the craftsmen, Pretend that we are G.O.D.s like the G.O.D.s and give us this technology, give us this weapons so we can defend and save the world. It, the whole pattern of the movie is similar today where man is, thinks he's G.O.D.s, superhuman mighty ones, making superheroes mighty ones. Children are no more calling into the superhero of Yahushua or Moshe or Joshua, Joshua. No more to the, the men and women of the scriptures as my, uh, superhuman uh, ones we look at as an example to live by and dream by. They want to obey or follow the superhuman or mighty ones of, of Catwoman, Batman, and all the, the, the Spider-Man, and all Thor, which is Thursday, similar. And all these pagan names that they have, some are genetically engineered and some are brought here from the, another dimension. But they're worshiping mighty ones and they want to be mighty ones now themselves to come to a higher up preparing for the anti-messiah the beast and the false uh, prophet the fortune teller look at chapter 5 same book Micaiah Micaiah, chapter 5 verse 3 therefore he shall give them up why? because everyone walks each one in the name of his own mighty one Verse chapter 4 verse 5 they all walk in the name. But we will walk in the Shem, the name, the character of Yahuwah, our Elohim, forever and ever. We will walk. We're the only ones that would speak the proper way. When you get a, you can get witches, you can get pagans, you can get Buddhists, you can get Hindus, you can get Christians, and they're going to say, my G-O-D is this, and my G-O-D is this, and my L-O-R-D is this, my L-O-R-D is this. But for us, we, we say, 
Our Elohim is is Yahuwah and we are the house of Israel and we worship Yahuwah our Elohim and we have the Ruah HaKadosh we have the Ruah of Yahuwah we don't have no no HG ghost we have the Ruah of Yahuwah and let's look at continue it says verse 5 and he shall stand and shepherd in the strength of Yahuwah in the excellency of the Shem of Yahuwah his Elohim and they shall dwell for for at that time he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And we know some of that is a Nabiim of a, a prophecy or a Nabi of our, of our Messiah, Yeshua. In, in Melachim Aleph or, or 1 Kings 18.20, how long, how long will you be between two opinions? How long will you continue to be two, two, two opinions? You see the King, I got a Thomas Chain, King James reference scriptures. And it says it in the footnotes with the G-O-D, with the L-O-R-D capital letters, with the capital W for way is, with the capital N-A-M-E is. It says it in the references and the leads and the, and the words of wisdom going back and forth, all those things. I don't use the word wisdom no more. That's Sophia Thema, the seal of California. But I'm just saying in the prudent understanding. So it, it's in the footnotes of Christianity scriptures, but it's becoming less and less and less till it's no more. And we're being lied to, inherited lies from our forefathers and falsehood. We need to repent from our sins. It says the mystery of iniquity already worked back in the book of Thessalonians, bad, the second Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 through 12. It already worked there, the mystery of iniquity. It's happening greater now. In Isaiah 52, 6, we shall know his name and call his name, proclaim his name. Hallelujah, call on his name, make mention of his name, exalt his name. Isaiah, Yeshua, Yeshua Yahu, 12, 12, 2 through 5. No more. No more shall we no more shall we proclaim those pagan principalities. It's not it's not Greek mythology, it is Greek deities of principalities and powers. Mark my words and hear this. If it ain't, then why is uh, Lady Justice in the courthouse a pagan deity? Why is Libertarius everywhere, even in Japan and China? Why is these pagan deities of grace have images? Any time there's a name of Greek deities with an image and a picture, believe me, there was a principality spirit behind it. These are corners of geographic locations in the breakdown of Greek principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, high places. We exposed our fathers have inherited lies we make a correction and make a correction means redirection you have to go back to the place your father started correct it go back to the place of your grandfather started correct it and most of you don't even know your ancestry it's sad but you probably got Hebraic roots of some farm or Native American bloodline that spoke the name of Yahweh and so you got deep roots somewhere and you're crying out from inside that it's not working no more. There's something wrong with Christianity. There's something going on. I'm uncomfortable. I, I'm, not, I'm tired of it. I'm not being fulfilled. There's something empty not being filled no matter what you do and where you go. Well, I'm here to tell you, Yahuwah sent His Son, Yahushua, the real Hebrew Messiah, to shed His blood on Calvary, put a stake on the Skullhead Mountain where Goliath's head was buried by Dawid. It destroyed the works of the Nephilim, the half-breeders. They're walking this earth even today, downsized. And the blood, our blood has been transformed into the blood of the house of Israel. We're grafted in. We're no more Gentile. That's a Catholic word, goy. We're not goy. We're not even goyim no more. We're sojourning still, but we're, we know we're the house of Israel. We're practicing. We're there ready to be transfigured back to that place of New Jerusalem when it begins. So thank you for tuning in with me. I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for enjoying this message. 
We, we, we speak Berakah and the, 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 the fullness of, of Yahuwah to be upon you. And may your mind and heart be renewed with the reading and the washing of the word in Yahushua's name. And thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, go ahead and look at our archives at Eagles Haven. Or look at our files of videos and research and study. And go ahead and, and blog us, email us. Even if you don't like us, I don't care. I respond or I, I just love you and pray for you and agree. One thing about I learned living in Israel is that they could be 70 rabbis. They all disagree, but they all agree that they disagree. And they all abide and believe in one thing, and that is the, the word of Yahuwah. Now, a lot of them are not speaking the name, and they will learn the name. It will come off that veil. Just like the Christians, it's going to come off. And I thank you for tuning in to Eagles Haven Ministry or ElieyahuChannel.com. Shalom, shalom.